waves of death rose about me. The pains of the nether world surrounded me. In my anguish, I called to the Lord, and from his holy temple, he heard my voice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear friend, good morning, and welcome to our Saturday devotion, the 28th day of March, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 2020. Let us pray. May the working of your mercy, O Lord, we pray, direct our hearts all right, for without your grace, we cannot find favor in your sight. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friend, allow me to share with you the gospel of the day. Is the Christ to come from Galilee? The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. We are reading from chapter 7, verses 40 to 53. At that time, when they heard the words of Jesus, some of the people said, This is really the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But some said, is the Christ to come from Galilee? Has not the scripture said that the Christ is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David was? So, there was a division among the people over him. Some of them wanted to arrest him but no one laid hands on him. The officers then went back to the chief priests and Pharisees, who said to them, Why did you not bring him? The officers answered, No man ever spoke like this man. The Pharisees answered them, are you led astray, you also? Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, who do not know the law, are accursed. Nicodemus, who had gone to him before, and who was one of them, said to them, does our law judge a man without fasting, giving him a hearing and learning what he does? They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Such and you will see that no prophet is to rise from Galilee. They went each to his own house. The Gospel of our Lord. My dear friend, today, as I said, we celebrate the, the fourth week of Lent, Saturday, the 28th. And today, I want us to reflect on the value of listening. A study was done in San, San Francisco, California, USA, for three teenage prostitutes. During the interviews, they were asked, Is there anything you needed most and couldn't get? Their response, invariably preceded by sadness and tears, was unanimous. What I needed most was someone to listen to me, someone who cared enough to listen to me, and of the court. In our today's gospel, Jesus speaks, and the people 
including his enemies, listen to him. In fact, they say that uh, no man has ever spoken like this man. No man ever spoke like this man. They listened. Today, my dear friend, I want to share with you the benefits of listening. And I would want to tell you something uh, as a personal um, confession. As a family therapist for a number of years, there is nothing as important as listening. And today I can say this without any fear of contradiction, that one of the greatest woods, one of the greatest woods or weaknesses in our families is that there is no listening. Husbands and wives are not listening to one another. Children come to me and they tell me, Father, my dad never listens to me. My mom never listened to me. You can imagine, couples are not listening to each other. And moms and dads are not even listening to their children. And of course, now out there, then we are guilty as charged. If you listen to others, you will gain a lot. I'll take you through the 10 benefits of listening. Number one, if you, when you listen, you will be more appreciated by the people whom you talk to. You will be more appreciated. Number two, you will get new points of view, new perspectives, and new insights. Very important. Number three, when you listen, you might get some good advice. None of us has the monopoly of knowledge. Number four, your relationships with people will be more harmonious. Read this as family members. Number five, when you listen, people who love your company we will love you the more. People will love your company the more. Why? Because you listen. You know, some of us priests, we are very poor listeners. And then we accuse our Christians. They are this or the other one. We've got men and women, <laughs> religious, who are very poor listeners. We have no time to listen to our people. Forget even about listening to, to confessions because we are a busy lot. Very sad. Number six. Listening develops patience and tolerance in the listener. Now, let me tell you something. In the year 2004, there's a gracious lady who came to my office. And she sat. And I listened to her from 8.15 a.m. to 1.45 p.m. And of course, I can tell you for a fact that that day, I knew that I can listen. You know, when we listen, you know, we, we develop tolerance. Very important. Number seven, listening to others can help you solve problems and see new opportunities. Number eight, people will like you more because people like good listeners. Take that word from me. And this I can testify. Number nine, listening to people will help you understand them and their needs. And this would enhance your popularity. And number 10, this could be my best. Listening makes you more and more like Jesus Christ. Who wouldn't want to be more like Jesus? Let us be a listening people. Let us pray. May your holy gifts purify us, O Lord, we pray. And by their working, render us fully pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look upon your people, O Lord. And as they draw near to the coming festivities, Bestow upon them abundance of heavenly grace that helped by the consolations of this world, they may be compelled more readily towards higher goods that cannot be seen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friend, do have a productive Saturday. Asante sana. Thank you.